Hello, and thank you for joining us for Lesson 2 of Rearing Children God's Way. My name is Isaac Davis. I'm the pastor at Harvest Baptist Church. And the purpose of these lessons is to help parents, grandparents, teachers, those who work with children or have children. The, the task of training children God's way is it's very, very important and very, very difficult. Man has so many philosophies and, and, and thoughts in parenting today, and so much of that is contrary to God's Word. And it's important that we follow the manual that God has given. And that's what we covered in our first lesson. If you haven't been able to watch that yet, I encourage you to here on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. And we just looked at some basic thoughts and principles from God's Word when it comes to training children. And it's important that we all start off on the same uh, foundation. Uh, we're not going to be following man's uh, latest trend or man's latest thought with child rearing. We see clearly God's command and that their children are God's gift. And God has a way to go about that. And I won't rehash that entire lesson. I invite you to watch if you haven't already. Today, we're going to be looking at something, in my opinion, perhaps the most important part of all of this. You know, training children is so very important in their behavior and modifying their, their actions and, and, and words and, and all of these things, and it's so very important. But training children doesn't necessarily always reach the heart. If we're going to reach the heart of our child, we're going to need God to intervene. We're going to need His grace above all else. And so I believe this lesson today will be very important, very helpful, very practical, very simple thought I want you to consider in rearing children God's way. And as we get started, let's ask God's blessing in a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for each one that's joining us today, watching. We pray that you would help us, Lord, as we try to raise our children for you. We lift them up in prayer. We ask for strength to abide by your word and your law. You said you would give it, and we come claiming that boldly. We thank you for the blessing of children. We thank you for the reward you've given. Please help us to be good stewards uh, and, and raise them, train them, rear them for you. Help us in this lesson, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we begin lesson two, I'm really coming to you with one thought, and we're going to break it down in many different ways. As I've already mentioned, training children impacts their behavior, but won't always reach their heart. The single most important thing that you and I can do for our children as parents, guardians, uh, teachers is this. Pray. Pray for your children. The world in which we live today, scary, especially when it comes to spiritual matters. And yet, the Bible says that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And so, for our lesson today, I'd like to give you 10 prayer requests for your children. We'll just spend a brief moment on each one. This list is certainly not exhaustive, certainly doesn't cover absolutely every area, but I believe it covers many important areas. And I would encourage you to make this a list that you pray for your children. I believe you'll see how important each one of these things are. So let's jump into it. First of all, as we're praying for our children, I'd like us to see that we need to pray, number one, for their salvation. It's very important for us as parents to pray for our children's salvation. The Bible says in Mark chapter 10, verse 15, Jesus is speaking, and he says this to his disciples, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. It's very important for us to pray for our children to trust Christ, to come to know him as their Savior, as their Heavenly Father, have a personal relationship with him at a young age. I encourage you, if your children are not saved, be praying for their salvation. If your children are just uh, a year, two, three years old, 
be in prayer for their salvation, make it a daily prayer request. Oh, how important it is for our children to trust Christ at a young age. I believe it was uh, a preacher uh, went out soul winning one day and came back and gave a report and said, oh, we had two and a half people saved today. Some were taken back by that. One of them figured they understood. Oh, you mean you had two adults trust Christ and one child? And he said, no, in fact, the exact opposite. Two children put their faith in Christ today and one adult. You see, those children still have their full lives ahead to live for God. The adult, half their life has already passed. How true it is, Scripture. We, we, children have their entire lives ahead of them. It's so important that they make the first and most important decision that they be saved. And I encourage you, pray for your children's salvation. Oh, so important. Regardless of their age, you say, my, my children are already teens and don't know Christ. Make it a daily prayer request. Maybe you don't have children yet. Maybe you just have a, a baby, an infant. Be in prayer, first and foremost, for their salvation. Next, not only for their salvation, I believe we should pray, second of all, for their spiritual growth. Second Peter chapter 3, verse number 18, the Bible says, But grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. The Bible commands us all not just to receive Christ and be done with our knowledge of him. No, instead we must grow in grace and in our knowledge of God. Be in prayer for your children that they would learn to grow spiritually. You know, I believe if we would pray constantly for our children to grow spiritually, we would see different avenues in which the Lord can answer that prayer. Perhaps that means they need to be faithful in church. And by the way, it does mean that. You need to be faithful anytime your church and the doors are open. Children need to be there. Parents, we need to be there. Anytime we can open up God's word and hear it preached and hear it taught, we need to take advantage of it. Why? The Bible commands us, let's grow in grace. Let's grow spiritually. Make it an important prayer request for your children, for your grandchildren, for those children that you work with as, as a guard, whatever the case may be. Pray for their salvation, second of all, for their spiritual growth. Next, I want us to look at, need to make it a prayer request that we pray for a love of God's word. Pray that your children would love the Bible. You see, the Bible is our source of growth. If they're going to grow spiritually, it's going to be because of God's Word. Without God's Word, they won't be growing spiritually. And yet, the key to the Christian life is the love of God's Word. Psalm 119 gives us many different verses. Verse 97 says, Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Verse 127 tells us, Therefore I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. Verse 165 tells us this, listen, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Well, we live in a day and age in which everyone's offended about everything. God says, love my word. I'll give you a peace that the world can't afford, that no one knows anything about unless they have a love for God's Word. Can I encourage you, pray for your children that they would love God and that they would love His Word. More important than anything else in our Christian life is the Bible. And it must be a, an important prayer request and a high priority for us, for our children, to train them to love God's Word. How are they going to love it? They just need to be in it. They need to be in it each day. I've often encouraged uh, young people, as I've worked with different young people in different areas of life, whether it be a school or, or a youth group or a setting, something like that, I've encouraged them. Perhaps you can do the same. Take whatever grade your child is in. Maybe they're in first grade. Encourage them to read their Bible for one minute. Just one minute. Second grade, maybe two minutes every day. 
in God's Word. It's difficult for them to read there at the beginning and, and may have to, to guide them and show them, but just get them in the habit of getting into God's Word. Fifth, sixth grade, maybe five or six minutes a day. Encourage them, get them in a plan, perhaps, you know, in, in, in just about five minutes they can read through the entire New Testament in one year. It's just a matter of getting a love for God's Word. Let's pray for our children to love God's Word. How about this? Another request. Let's pray for our children to have a longing to follow God. A longing to follow God. You know, in this world in which we live, there are so many other things bombarding our children for their attention. And, and, and pursue this and, and go after this and, and work hard at this. And while some of those things may not be harmless, if we don't first and foremost follow God, none of it's going to be worth it. We must train them, pray for them to have a longing to follow God. Paul said it this way in, in Philippians chapter 3, verse number 10. He says that I may know him. You see, before those verses, he talked about uh, some things, and, and even after those verses, look, I'm not talking about all my accomplishments in life. I haven't really attained anything until I just know God more, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. We must have that desire as a parent, and we must pray for our children you say, my child is three years old. Do I really need to pray for them to follow God? Oh, I beg you. I beg you. No matter what age your child is, make it a, an important prayer request for them that they would long to follow God. Follow, follow. I will follow Jesus anywhere. Everywhere I will follow on. You know, if they have a love for God, they're going to want to follow him. Train them. What we saw in our previous lesson, Deuteronomy 6 gives instruction for parents to teach our children to love God. Talked about when we're sitting down, rising up, walking about, whatever the case may be, however our day goes, love God. Teach our children to love the Lord that God and to love His Word and to want to follow Him. A longing to follow God. How about this one? Very important. Make this a prayer request for our children for their physical and mental purity. Their physical and mental purity. Proverbs chapter 4 tells us in verse 23, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. I think it goes without saying that the world we live in is very, very impure. Righteousness, holiness is nowhere to be found. It must be so difficult. It's difficult for us as parents, but think about the children that uh, we're training and, and, and raising in these days, rearing to be like Christ, and yet they have so much around them that they can uh, partake in just with the single tap of a button at their fingertips that's readily available. It must be a priority for us as parents and grandparents to pray for their physical and mental purity. 1 Corinthians 6.18 says, Flee fornication. Psalm 51.10 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 3 says, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. It must be of the utmost importance for us as parents to pray for our children for their purity. Physical and mental purity, not just what they do, but what they think. The Bible says our thoughts will lead to actions, our actions will lead to habits. May we pray now. You say, my children are so innocent, and yet it's so important each and every day. Make this a matter of a priority. Pray for our children, for their physical and mental purity. How about this? Number six, pray for our children for courage. That they would have courage. David was talking to Solomon, his son, in 1 Chronicles chapter 28. 
and given him a task to do. It was a, a difficult task. And as he was going forward in it, David tells his son this in verse 20. He says, And David said to Solomon, his son, Be strong and of a good courage and do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed. The rest of the verse continues and says, For the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. What a powerful thought and message. It's a difficult day for a, a child to live for God. As they get into elementary school and, and, and middle school and, and high school, it's not the popular thing to want to stand up for what's right. We need to pray for courage, that they'd be unashamed of Christ. If they have in their hearts a love for God, a love for God's word, a, a desire to follow God, we must pray that they then have courage to stand for what's right, to not back down when it comes to clear righteousness and holiness. But if they're going to do that, they're going to need courage. And it doesn't matter how much we train and do our best to help modify their behavior, we must pray for their courage. Ask God to intervene, to work on their behalf, and give them courage. How about this? Number seven, I would encourage you to pray for their mate. Pray now for their spouse. You say, Pastor, my child is six years old. That's the last thing I'm thinking of. Oh, I'm not saying set them up. <laughs> I'm not saying line up a date for I'm not saying that. I'm saying ask God to prepare their mate. What goes on in an individual's life before marriage oftentimes has a big effect on the marriage. The Bible tells us in Genesis 2, verse number 24, Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Coming out of one upbringing and, and beginning a, a new home. And though we're leaving one behind, so much is affected during those initial years. And so I would encourage you even now, I've done my best every day, even before my children were born. Ah, uh, sure, I've missed days here and there, but I pray for their mate. I pray for God's protection on them. I pray a lot of these requests for the one that they'll give their lives to for in marriage, that they be pure, that they would follow God, that they would have a desire to live for God. I, I don't want my children to grow and, and, and love God and, and marry someone and then get off track. Not because my children are better than, no, but because it's our desire, as we saw last week, for our children to fulfill their purpose that, that God has for them. God has a purpose for our child's life. And, and we don't want to go 18, 20, 24, 25 years, whatever the case may be, and, and hand them off and they leave, and, and then who knows what direction they go. It's so vitally important that we pray for their mate. I would encourage you to make that a daily prayer request for your child. How about this? Number eight, pray for compassion and tenderness. Compassion and tenderness. Jude. 1, verse 22, the Bible says, And if some have compassion, making a difference. 1 Peter 3, 8 says, Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Compassion, tenderness, for most people, doesn't come naturally. But it's also important that our children are compassionate to others, that are tender to the situation. As I mentioned earlier, I've done my best to, to pray these things for my children, and I beg God to give them a, a tender heart towards Him. I want them to hear from God when, when they read. I, I want them, as they sit in church and, and hear messages being preached and, and teachers teaching lessons to I want them to have their hearts open towards what God has for them. 
I don't want them to be so set in their ways that they've got no desire to hear from God. And, and I don't want them to have their hearts so closed and, 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 and cold to the things of God. No, I want it to be tender. I love it when they shed a tear. No, they're not perfect. No, they don't come and talk to me about every message, but there are times when we talk. And I, I mean, t tell me what God's doing in your heart. And they'll break down and cry and share perhaps something that God spoke to them about in the lesson. And that encourages my heart as a parent. We must continue to pray as they, my, my children specifically, as one becomes a teenager here soon and the other uh, getting into middle school and all these things. I, I just pray that they would have a compassion for others. That they wouldn't see life as all about them. The world doesn't revolve uh, around them. It doesn't revolve around us. And, and they have a heart and desire and compassion for others and a tenderness to God, a tenderness to uh, authority, a tenderness to things of right. Next, and we're almost finished. Number nine, pray that they would have a submissive and a humble heart. A submissive and humble heart. James chapter four Verse number six, you perhaps know this verse. Uh, the Bible says in James chapter four, verse six, but he giveth more grace, wherefore he resisteth. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. That verse is certainly a challenge to me. Personally, I don't want God to resist me. If anyone's gonna resist me, it can't be God. It can't be our creator. It can't be our heavenly father. But God says he resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. I want God to give his grace to my children. I want him to pour out his grace on them. And the only way he will do that is if they come humbly, have a humble heart, have a submissive heart. The Bible says in Romans 6, 13, And neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but then it says this, But yield yourselves unto God. Oh, I pray that my children would have a heart that wants to submit to whatever God says, to whatever God wants. That they would have an attitude, as I mentioned earlier, and have a compassion and a tenderness to God and a submissive and humble heart to what he wants for them. Again, he has a purpose in mind. They don't know what it is yet. I don't know what it is yet. But his purpose and his plan is so much greater than anything I could ever dream of for my children. Oh, I have high hopes and dreams, as you do as well. And yet God's are so much greater. God has so much more. But the only way they're going to find that is with a submissive heart, yielding to what God wants, a humble heart, saying, I'll do what you want, Lord. It's not about me. It's about you. And we pray for our children to have a submissive and a humble heart. And then finally, Again, as I mentioned before, this isn't an exhaustive list, but just 10 requests that you can pray for your children. The 10th one is this, for their protection from Satan. Pray for their protection from Satan. In this passage in Luke 22, we see Jesus talking to one of his closest disciples, Simon Peter. He says this in verse 31 of Luke 22, the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. He may sift you as wheat. Did you catch that? One of the closest friends to Jesus, Satan had a desire for. And then Jesus said this in verse 32, but I've prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. He tells Peter, be careful, Satan wants you. In fact, I know he's got a desire for you. 
I'm praying for you, Peter. I'm praying that you'll be protected, that your faith won't fail. Oh, we must take this incredible example from Jesus Christ, our ultimate example, and remember this for our children. Just like Satan wants you and Satan wants me, Satan really wants our children. Again, they have their whole lives ahead of them by God's grace. And Satan wants to, to get at their heart and Satan wants to, to, to cloud their mind and, and Satan wants to harden uh, their hearts and their lives towards things of God and we must pray for their protection from Satan. As much as you and I want God's best for them, Satan wants to destroy them. He would like nothing more than to see our children turn their backs against God. He would like nothing more than to see our children have no desire to tell others about their Heavenly Father. We must make it a matter of prayer. Perhaps your children don't want anything to do with God right now. I, I hope this isn't a discouragement to you. I hope it's an encouragement. We, we all need it. By, by God's grace, uh, any of us can be in any position at this moment. And, and, and God can certainly bring anyone back home. Oh, there's stories throughout Scripture. I think of Luke 15 and 16. Uh, I think of a child who wasted everything and then came back. And the Heavenly Father welcomed him with open arms. And God can do the same for you and your family. But perhaps you have very young children. Pray every day for their protection from Satan. You say, my child's four years old. Oh, how important it is. To gain the heart of our children, even at a very young age, we must pray for our children for their protection from Satan. So we've seen ten things. We must pray for their salvation, their spiritual growth, a love of God's word, the longing to follow God, for their physical and mental purity, for courage. Pray for their mate. Pray for compassion and tenderness submissive and humble heart. Pray for their protection from Satan. If you're interested in these notes and a hard copy, be sure to mention that in the comments. I'll be happy to send you a hard copy of this. And I want to leave you with a closing thought. One closing thought to kind of sum up what we've talked about this evening, and that's this. There's nothing more precious than our children. And there's nothing more powerful than prayer. Prayer can do anything that God can do. And God can do anything. May we determine as parents, rearing children God's way, may we determine to pray like never before for our children. May we determine to Pray these requests and, and perhaps certainly many others. It's so important that we ask God's blessing on our children. We can train. We can do our best to modify behavior. But God must have their heart. God must intervene. God's grace must be evident in our children's lives if they're going to live for him. And so as we continue, Lord willing, in the coming lessons and give you some very practical things that you can put into place each and every day to, to, to help as we rear children God's way, remember, no matter how much of that we do, it's all in vain if God doesn't intervene. And so I encourage you, let's pray these requests for our children. Pray for one another. Again, it's not an easy task as we for your children, but where God gives us direction and instruction in Scripture, He gives us the strength to continue on. Thank you for joining us. Lesson two of Rearing Children God's Way. Hope you can join us again in the future. Have a good day.